Good morning. Happy Thursday. This is not a round two. This is an entirely different subject. I was reviewing some of the comments in my insurance video wherein I was asked to provide some arguments in favor of cities maintaining the insurance for police. And I did so. Um, there were some really inane comments. Uh, one commenter, Surfeit, I believe it was, or maybe it was Smash Anarchy, but I think it was Surfeit. They're both equally stupid. Suggested that I was arguing that the police should not be sued if they violate someone's rights. And in fact, I never even approached that particular premise. My whole premise was based on, my premises, I guess, since there were multiple, were based on what was best for the city and what was best for the taxpayer and what was best for the victim. City, taxpayer, victim. I did not approach it as far as what was best for the police officer. So if you're, if you're reading in anything in that last video about an argument in favor of what is best for the police officer, you are horribly biased and you're not listening. You're imagining. But I think one of the biggest issues that people have is they don't understand the purpose of a lawsuit for a rights violation. If someone has violated your rights, you need to prove that they did so under color of state law for a 1983 lawsuit. And you have to prove damages. You have to prove how much it harmed you because the purpose of a 1983 lawsuit is not to punish the police, but it's to make the victim whole. Just like any tort, you have to prove liability and damages. So if the point of the lawsuit is to make the victim whole, then the best interest of the victim is for the person who violated the victim's rights to have a large insurance pool of money from which to make the victim whole. This isn't rocket science. If you deny the right of the city to pay for insurance, you're denying the right of the city to make sure there is money available for the victims. And I hate to break this to you. I do hate to break this to you. But there is no way around taxpayers paying for the mistakes of the police. There's just no way around it. Any monies that come out of that police officer's pocket are going to be taxpayer monies. Any deterrent factor that you apply to the police to make them fear uh, being the target of a lawsuit is going to make it harder to find people willing to be police officers. And in order to attract these people, you're going to have to raise the wages. You're going to have to sweeten the pot. There's just no way around it. They are public employees. They're they are going to be supported by the public. The public is going to be saddled with their mistakes come hell or high water. That's just the way it is. Now, in order to punish them, there are statutes available to punish police officers for violating people's rights. 18 U.S.C. 242 is a prime example thereof. It essentially mirrors the language of 18 or 42 U.S.C. 1983, but it is a criminal statute. You don't have to prove damages. They just have to do the bad thing. It's there to punish. Uh, one commenter stated that if uh, making people carry their own insurance doesn't work, then why do states require doctors and lawyers to carry malpractice insurance? Well, most states don't. California certainly doesn't. I'm under no obligation to carry malpractice insurance. Doctors in California are under no obligation to carry malpractice insurance. And in fact, the legislature has limited the liability of doctors for medical malpractice. I think it's like 167,000 or some, some similar number. 
I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but they are limited in their liability. I may be pulling that number from a different statute now that I'm thinking about it. I wasn't planning on talking about medical malpractice, but anyway, my point is that it doesn't, it isn't required. And even where it is required, doctors still make mistakes. Doctors make mistakes. It's part of being a doctor. It's part of being a human being. Human beings make mistakes. Mechanics make mistakes. Carpenters make mistakes. Police officers make mistakes. That's just, that's just a fundamental fact of life. It's something that auditors and police accountability activists are going to have to get through their heads, that there is no punishment suitable out there to make police perfect. It's just not going to happen. I mean, we have, we have the death penalty in a lot of states for certain capital crimes, and yet people still commit them. It's like there, there's, there's no perfect solution for this. But anyway, back to the point of the original video, I still believe it is in the city's best interest because they will be faced with Manel claims and they need to have the ability to provide the defense for the police officer to ensure that they aren't stuck with any Manel claims after the police officer is done. It's in the best interest of the city because the city can fund can provide a perk for police officers to incentivize good police officers to hire on and stay by offering them insurance at the city's cost, not at the officer's cost, because remember, the city would still be paying it. They would just be paying it in the form of officer salary, which gets an extra uh, employer tax. And it would be in the best interest of the taxpayers because they would save money because the they wouldn't be paying that extra employment tax. And it's definitely in the best interest of the victim because the victim is assured that there are going to be monies available to compensate the victim for the harms done to the victim. It's this isn't rocket science, kids. I know I know there is a handful of you that are just desperate to punish the police because you think they're just all terrible, horrible human beings, but this is really not a good route to do it. It's, it's a very poorly thought out route and eh, I mean, I haven't seen a really good argument for it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.